And the CEO gave you a, a like a mild brush back at first, right? Like, mm, be careful, something along those lines. Yeah. And I mean, you know, a few had talked to me b- before him, all my peers, head of legal as well, just reminding me when you talk, you talk on behalf of the company. And I said, but I don't, I'm not, I'm a person, I'm a public school mom. <clears throat> and eventually he did talk to me. You know, it's not something he likes to do, have these unpleasant conversations. He's a very nice Chipper. person. CEO. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and he's a, he's a, he's a nice person. He doesn't like to have these unpleasant conversations, which I I understand, but he he did. And again, it was sort of the the same kind of reminder, you know, you're speaking on behalf of the company. I was very careful not to have, you know, my title or the company in any of my bios. So I, it was clear, even if you could easily find that I was the president of Levi's, it was clear that I was not speaking on behalf of Levi's. And at the end of the day, I'm a mom of four first. And if, you know, if it comes to, well, you do speak on behalf of the company when you talk just because of who you are, I pick my kids and I yeah, pick you have to abandon your children. Uh, we're more important. Yeah. I mean, I pick my kids and the kids in this country. It's not just about my kids. It was the kids in San Francisco, the 50,000 public school students who were home, not getting an education. So you know, I made my choice. I, I I knew, I think, as I continued to persist and push back and watch my tone, I, you know, I definitely was diplomatic, um, I think. Yeah, um, you were not uh, a bomb thrower. I went back, I looked at your tweets and your Laura Ingram appearance. I mean, I'll just give, I'll give folks a, a, a an example. This is from a tweet thread that I think was um, July of 2021. And you, you wrote something like, look, um, my my children, the children, need to participate in sports and hug friends and even teachers. They're they're not required to think of themselves as filthy vectors of disease. Uh, this is when you moved them to Colorado. And they participate now in public life. They go to the playground en masse. They're relatively carefree, the way four and six year olds should be. Adults protect them, their childhood, not the other way around. In San Francisco, another year of school is threatened. Third school year, unbelievable. Poor kids suffer the most. Inequality deepens. Children are stigmatized. This is not out there stuff. And then this line jumped out at me, given everything that's happened. Um, you're talking about how, you know, we, we otherize one another and we don't accept difference. And you say, any deviation from the orthodoxy, the mainstream narrative, is demonized. You are canceled. And that is eventually what would effectively happen to you um, months later. And for nothing, for nothing other than trying to get the schools open for your kids and others. Yeah, I mean, you could argue when I wrote that, I saw the writing on the wall, I guess. Um, and, you know, it, you know, after speaking with the with the CEO, and it is worth noting, Megan, that amidst all of this, I got promoted. I mean, I got promoted in October of 2020 to brand president. Before that, I was the chief marketing officer. So there were certainly no issues with my performance. Right. Um, you know, I was rewarded with one of the top three jobs in the company. Um, and as you mentioned earlier, you know, the conversation around CEO became very real at that point, but it was sort of conditional. You need to watch what you say. You can't talk about this anymore. You shouldn't talk about this anymore. And I think I could, I, I couldn't do it. I, I don't know what to, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like, I can't, the kids are hurting. I just can't. Um, it didn't matter what the cost to me was. And it became clear that there was a high likelihood I would lose my job. I certainly for a year have been very nervous about getting getting fired. Um, it's such a weird position I, to go from, I'm either going to be CEO or I'm fired. I'm, I'm <laughs> going to figure out which. And what have I done again? I've stood up for children going to school, something that was mandated and required by the law up until recently. <laughs> like there, It's so important. The law has recognized we must make it happen in normal circumstances. Yeah, I mean, and the, what 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 happened? I think that really just escalated things for the leadership in the company. Is I did get you know a somewhat larger following, and I definitely got some trolls on social media, as one does. Um, and you know, with the same sort of stuff, racist, eugenicist. I got some anti-trans. I'm not totally sure where that came from. Just throw another one in there in the, in the mix. Um, and they started tagging my employer and, and saying boycott Levi's. Now it didn't affect our business, you know, 
shit happens on social media all the time. You, mm-hmm. you I'm sure you know this, you swat it away. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, and these were largely people that were, you know, very small followings. It wasn't, you know, picking up steam in any way. Um, but outside of social media, some of my, uh, some of the gymnastics fans who liked me for a hot second after athlete day came out, started a petition on Reddit fired, you know, to fire me. And I think they were calling the ethics hotline and then employees were following me on social media and they were upset by it. So they started emailing my boss. And so it just, there was a lot of noise and it can feel bigger, I think, than it is. Right. Like, cause when I look back at it all now, I think, Ignore the social media. It really <laughs> never got started into anything meaningful. Well, and but- say to the company, you may not agree with her, and that's okay. We all have a right to speak up. Mm-hmm. We use our voice. That's what we advocate for. And there it's done. And I will, you know, I I, I do want to note um at first that happened. Um, you know, Chip did stand up for me in a town hall. There was a ton of blowback from the Laura Ingram appearance, which I knew would happen, although I stand by everything I said there. Um, And he did defend me. You know, there were town hall, there was a town hall, and there was a lot of criticism and anonymous comments about my racism and anti-science views. And he said, you know, she's standing up for kids in public school, and she has a right to say it. And that was sort of the end of any public support. That was definitely the end. Um, it, and, you know, from there, the noise just got got greater. And I know he was getting emails and I know there were calls to the ethics hotline and it all just I, I was too much trouble. You know, I was more trouble than I was worth. What, what did he say when he said to you something like, you know, you, the only thing standing between you and your eventual taking over as CEO is you like this behavior? Yeah. I mean, because keep in mind, I say this was all sort of escalating in the summer of 21. The conversation I had with him about CEO and that being a possible path for me, that's that happened in the fall of 21. So, you know, there was still I got a lot of kudos for, you know, for my performance. And as a leader, uh, you know, I'm a passionate manager and leader and I care about people and I want people to be able to do the work of their lives that they feel really proud of for a company that they feel proud of. And I work really hard at that. And he recognized that. Um, he yeah, recognized it sounds, that 100%. It sounds like he, he recognized it, but was basically saying it's conditional. That Your next step is conditional on you stopping this. We don't. That's, we don't that's want right. It. And I... And, and, and meanwhile, was, they, you, you write about how your colleagues were out there, you know, a year earlier, constantly defeat Trump. We got to get that nightmare out of there. Like all that advocacy went by with no problem, but you was fighting fine. for the children. That's a, yes. that's a job coster. Yeah, that was fine. And I, um, who knows, I'm sure people are digging through all my social media right now to find some terribly unacceptable thing I've said. Uh, I, I, I did talk about politics and that was always fine. I, as you mentioned, I was a warm supporter in the Democratic primary, which we you know, you. I, I would do that differently, but <laughs> that's fine. We all make mistakes. Um, that was all fine. You know, and I, I posted about the Ahmaud Arbery murder and how horrifying and sad it was. Um, that one really hit me hard. Um that was all, that was all fine. So once again, you know, this is, you're a lawyer, this is viewpoint discrimination. It's, you know, the argument was we can't talk about these things that are political or controversial, but we can, it was literally the the viewpoint. And I, I think for me, this is so much more than, than Levi's. I mean, you know, my, my career there is over. It's a career I'm very proud of. Um, but this is what's happening in the culture more broadly, as you know, and the company is just sort of caught up in the whirlwind of it. Um, but it's this idea of stifling dissent and, you know, any view outside of whatever the orthodoxy is, whatever the mainstream narrative, or I should say, whatever the quote unquote progressive narrative is, that's unacceptable. And it's it so crazy, you though. It's like, doesn't a Levi, racist. you know, back to the Michael Jordan's Republicans buy sneakers, too. Republicans wear Levi's, too. Like, what? What are they doing? Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.